So today on First Cup, we've got another episode of Martial Arts Radio to talk about. I've got stuff from the weekend to talk about. It's snowing, and and there's just more stuff. So stick around. We roll in 15. Got my coffee. Got my props, which I must keep off camera. Here we go, props. In three, two... Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today's Monday. It's November 29th, 2021. My name is Jeremy. And this is my first cup of coffee. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Jenny. Well, good morning, Liz. So the, the first thing I need to say is that holy cow. Uh, 12 Months to Health launched on Friday, and so many of you have already bought it, and people are leaving reviews already, and I think we've got something here, and that doesn't mean that we can let up, it doesn't mean that we can stop the momentum in the group, it, mean, it definitely means I need all of you to leave reviews, but I think we're on to something. Everybody who's checked this thing out is like, yeah, this works, people are buying it as gifts, People get it. They get it. We're bringing the martial arts approach, philosophy, into the real world, into general life. And it's working. So thank you. I'm going to keep bugging you. I'm going to keep asking you for help. I'm going to keep asking you to tell people. I'm going to keep asking you to, to contribute to the Facebook group. I'm going to keep asking you to leave reviews if you haven't. But thank you. We're doing it. Good morning also to Mark and Eric. And lots of hearts, and everybody's really excited. Good morning, Susanna. Look at all these people coming in today. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I hope you had a great weekend. I had a very busy but good weekend. Friday was weird, you know, because day after Thanksgiving, I think I tapped out at like 1.30. I think I just, I was spent. This whole, let's work, and then let's take a day off, and then let's work thing that that was i have a hard time with that friday was almost like another monday for that reason and most of you who've been around a while know monday is not my day monday i kind of i'm challenged coming into the work week morning Dennis. then it says with the release of the book official can this show now also be called first glass well you could i drink my glass of water before I do the show, because I get up at 545 and it, it really should be first thing, like within minutes. So I already did that. In fact, I have a, a Nalgene that I've started going through and it's almost gone. I try to do that before I have any food, although there's cream in my coffee, so it kind of, technically it counts as food. Jenny's drinking her second glass of water. <gasps> Good morning, Francis. Well, let's see. So Friday, Friday was work, and I think I bought all my Christmas gifts, my holiday gifts for everyone. Um, cleaned up the house a little bit, did a bunch of other work, worked on some client websites. Um, went and kind of hung out at the gym. Like, I, I have not been super motivated to lift. And I'm hoping that I'm changing that today. Like I got, I, I've been lifting just not much. I've just been kind of going to the gym and just kind of going through some motions just to be there. Today I'm going to go to the range and then I'll go to the gym. So that'll be a good end of the day. But this weekend, ooh, this weekend. Yesterday I went and saw Dune with a friend. Eh. Here's, here's my issue with Dune. I never read the book. I don't know the characters. I don't know the story. I think they tried to put too much in one movie. And it's supposed to be a trilogy. Now, I'm not unhappy I saw it. I'm glad I saw it. And I'm definitely glad I saw it in the theaters because there's some really impressive cinematics in there. It just, it's, it's good. But it's it. I think the second one's going to be a lot better because now I actually care about the characters a little bit. So that was yesterday. 
Good morning, Frank. Frank says, last week we squeezed in a wedding, Christmas, and Thanksgiving all within a three-day period. Man, you were busy, my friend. That's a busy, that's a busy long weekend. One of the other things that I did, I went and had a Friendsgiving on Saturday, spent some time with some people I haven't seen in a while, had a few drinks, played some pool. It was a really nice time. Slept over. And when I came back, I was all motivated to, because <laughs> it was it was like nine degrees when I got up. So my car was frosted over. And as someone who is already missing parking in the garage, that was plenty of motivation. So I was like, let's get through these boxes, get through these boxes. Some of you may not have come in on the show recently. Uh, my father passed away in April. I'm going through his stuff, sorting it out. What goes to family? What gets, what am I keeping? What is getting sold off? And I found a few things and I thought I would show you some of these things. Um, I found his Leatherman or maybe his backup Leatherman because I'm, I'm fairly certain he had more than one. I don't think I'm going to carry this thing because, you know, I like the concept of Leatherman, but of a Leatherman, but there aren't too many times that I'm walking around going, man, I wish I had pliers or a screwdriver right now. A knife, sure. Uh, I found some, a few knives, ones in the kitchen being clean because there was something gross on it. Um, this is a cold steel something. If you know anything about knives, cold steel uh, is a pretty solid brand. And I found these really good binoculars. I was looking around outside with these. These are nuts. Like, they come, they've they got this cheap plastic strap on them, but these are really good binoculars. So I was kind of pumped for that. But you know what I was most pumped for? And if you follow me on, on Instagram personally, you've gotten a little bit of a preview. I keep finding all these pictures of me as a baby. And I'm going to show you. I have vague memories of, of I think my mother has the same photo too. But are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> if you're listening, you're missing out. Um, is a photo of me on the toilet with a book, uh, shouting, being very excited about life. The other one I wanted to show you. Me in a high chair with the dog, the dog being Tanya. Now, most of you probably know my affinity for dogs. I love dogs. Dogs are kind of the best. Let's let's just keep dogs around. The dog's name was Tanya. My first word, not ma, mother, mama, not dada, not grandma. Hi, Ta, my version of hi, Tanya. Yes. I've been ignoring people in favor of dogs since I could literally speak. So there are a bunch in here and I got to say, I was adorable. I don't know what they did to my hair there, but I'm going to have to scan these because some of these are great and I'm just I'm glad I found them. It's weird going through stuff. You know, especially that the, my parents were divorced, you know, and I'm flipping through things and like a piece of paper falls out of a. Well, what was that? I don't even think it was a photo album. It was, it was just something completely random. And it was the phone number I grew up with. But this was my out of my father's mother's stuff. Like just. There's just so I'm, I'm putting together these pieces that are elements of my childhood, my upbringing. And it's, it's odd. It's really odd, but in a way it's fun. And in, in a way I get to know myself a little bit better. So that's not a bad thing. Uh, what's going on today? I told you I'll go to the gym. I'll go to the range. I got meetings in the morning. Actually, it's all client stuff pretty much from nine to two. I think I got like six calls in there, five or six calls. Talking to one of the martial arts school clients this afternoon. It's time to start planning 2022. 
it feels like it's far away. It's not. It's a month. 2022 is a month away right now. And if you're here, we'll throw it out there. If you are your business or somebody that you know wants to try to get a leg up, take a big step forward, martial arts or not, you know, obviously my preference is working with martial arts clients, but I'll work with anybody because it's fun. I like working with different businesses because I get to learn at the same time. Um, I've got a couple slots. I can't take everyone, but I probably have room for one big client and three to four smaller clients, depending on hours. Let me know. Spread the word. Thank you. Oh, coffee's really good. Uh, this coffee actually came from a client who now lives in Costa Rica. And they were up two weeks ago and brought me some coffee. Every time they come up, they bring me a bag of coffee. And it's amazing. Imagine going to the grocery store and like your run of the mill Folgers cheap coffee was incredible. That's what they have down there. It's just great coffee all over the place. You guys are quiet this morning. Did I did I just did I break first cup with that picture? I think I broke first cup with that picture. That or comments aren't working. Good morning, Kelly. Happy Monday. Well, we, it's it is Monday, and there's an episode of Martial Arts Radio. Let's see who it is. I don't remember. <laughs> Stacy says, "Nope, we are not broken. That's good. That's good." Oh, by the way, if you're watching live or later, you see the ridiculous robe. I own the only one of these that exists. This was kind of the precursor to the the dragon hoodie that we did. I did this, what, two years ago? And it is almost too warm. But it's completely ridiculous, and I love it. And I long, you know, I've said before, I, I want just enough celebrity that I could call my agent and say, I want to be I want to be a guest star on that show. Like, I want to call up and just be like, hey, can I be murder victim number three on Law and Order? Like, I want to be able to do that. Um, I also want to be enough of a celebrity that I can wear this in public and not be judged harshly. I don't know that that is possible, but I would I would accept that. Liz says, trying to soak in how adorable you were, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go for another one. Oh, you know, motorcycle. Yep, been riding since back in the day. I remember that thing. Um, and then on, <laughs> I sent a couple big. I took a couple shots and um, sent them to a friend yesterday after I found these. What else do I do? Oh, garden. Wait, where is it? This one. Me with an ear of corn in a diaper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Stacy's reminding me who who it is. Um, Wrenchy Wolf. So Wrenchy Nikki Wolf is the guest on today's episode. And, you know, here we are six and a half years in on the show and we still find people training in these I, I think the word most of us would use is fringe but that there's there there's an implication of a judgment in there and I, and I don't mean the word in that way but these fringe martial arts that nobody does and so she's training in this martial this very old martial tradition on a horse of training on a horse fighting on from a horse it's not it's not like the japanese version of dressage this is actual mounted combat and she lives in south africa and tells these stories that are just insane great episode i, I think you're going to be glued on this one i really do and jared says Seeing your hair color. <laughs> yeah, 
I had amazing hair until I was like nine. If we, if I cut it short enough, especially in the summer, I have red through my beard, like the Irish roots come out. And I had very red with even some blonde, curly, like over the top hair. And if you want the best picture of that hair, here it is. There's Jeremy with the hair. You know, but there are other pictures in here that have nothing to do with me that I've enjoyed looking. Oh, that's like a cabaret show. We're not showing that. Um, you know, pictures of my father, my grandfather building or fixing or whatever the shed in the backyard where I grew up, you know, and they're, they're standing there drinking, you know, having a beer. Like, it's been really interesting going through this stuff. I needed this. And I'm glad I get to do it. It's tiring. There are, t there are times I find things in boxes and I'm like, Ooh, I'm done for the day. Like just something will just hit me. But I'm glad I get the opportunity. Everybody's enjoying the hair. Jared says there's some HEMA practitioners that recreate mounted combat, but that's expensive to maintain. Uh, Nikki talks all about this. This is this is not, and and, and I, I don't know that I have the language to describe this. This is not we take what we do on the ground and apply it to horses. This is, here's the best way I can describe it. If you've read Faith, which actually I was telling my friend about yesterday, the novel I wrote, there's a part in there where I lay out the very loose parameters for a partner combat system where both people are necessary in the sets. That's how I saw what she described. That the horse was not just a positional advantage, that the horse actually knew what was going on. The horse was her partner in this fighting style. It's an amazing episode. I think you guys are really going to like it. So check it out. Uh, really, really cool. She does get a little political about halfway through for like five seconds. If you hit that and you get worried, don't. Don't be. Because I let her know ahead, this is not what we do. And it was very brief. So if you have like a 30-second skip and you don't want to hear politics... Hit that and you'll be done. All right, time to dig into what you all gave me to talk about. Here we go. So we're gonna start with Frank. November is Native American Heritage Month. I've got some more quotes here. Children were encouraged to develop strict discipline and high regard for sharing. When a girl picked her first berries and dug her first roots, they were given away to an elder so she would share her future success. When a child carried water for the home, an elder would give compliments, pretending to taste meat in water carried by a boy or berries in that of a girl. The child was encouraged not to be lazy and to grow straight like a sapling. Morning Dove, looks like an English name of Christine Quintescott, 1888 to 1936. The idea of sharing, the idea of connecting the action that they wanted the child to value with uh, a reward, an existential reward. It makes all kinds of sense to me. We hear about, and, and I'm, I'm kind of the victim of this, I was applauded for my outcomes, not for my effort. And when I teach, and when I work with martial arts school, uh, rather instructors that are new, reward the behavior that you want to see. Yeah, you did a great job learning that form, but how about you did a great job practicing that form? 
if you reward the behavior, if you encourage the behavior, the hard work, et cetera, the, re- the outcomes will happen. The irony is it happens better because they have more control over their effort. The more time they put in, they have control over that. They don't all have control over equity of outcome. If you build a culture of hard work, everything else falls in place. If you build a culture of successful outcome, well, I, I think we know that that doesn't always lead where we want it to go. Next, out of the Indian approach to life, there came a great freedom, an intense and absorbing respect for life, enriching faith in a supreme power and principles of truth, honesty, generosity, equity, and brotherhood as a guide to mundane relations. Luther standing bare, Ogala Suchi. Intense and absorbing respect for life. The closer we live to nature, the more I think you have to find beauty in it. I'm not necessarily going to say that you find faith or religion in it, but there's an appreciation. The more time you spend in a garden, the more you find power just in nature's ability to overcome. I I spent some time dialing in the hydroponic system and just blown away at what little bits of plant that I cut from larger bits of plant outside have been able to do just setting in some water. It's pretty incredible. There's food coming. Things that I've learned from, you know, last year to this year. It's pretty great. There are other things here from many of you. Let's, let's see what we can get to. Stacey asked, does my large glass of water come before or after my first cup? Definitely before. But I think you knew that. I think that was the joke. Kelly says, had a great morning teaching and actually figured out a move and a pattern after years of doing it. Has anyone else ever had those aha moments and don't you find it exciting? I have. If you value those aha moments, I think the best advice I can give is training different things with different people in different ways. The more you're that we're exposed to, the more opportunities for those moments are. As opposed to if we spend all of our time doing the same thing with the same people, we are, if anything, making it difficult to find those aha moments. I've been blessed. I've had quite a few of them. People have told me, they're like, oh, you know, I, I like the way you do this or that. If I break down what I do and how I do it and why I do it, it comes from so many different people, so many different places. It it is it's it is such an amalgamation. But because of that, I think I am less prone to being entrenched in any one aspect. I, I've talked before, I spent some time on TikTok, I put up some videos on TikTok and, and the martial arts community on TikTok is interesting because as you would expect, it's there, there's a good chunk of people who equate martial arts to self-defense. But when you when you look at their comments, when you when you dig into that and the arguments that come from it, it's a lot of people not able, unwilling, unable, unable, unable to recognize that there could be some elements of what they do that might not be perfect. They're backing in their, their practice to the logic. Oh, well, in a self-defense, self-defense situation with yada, 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 well, you know, if you train this, you could do this. And could that work? Sure. Is that anywhere on the top 10 of ways that might be best to respond? No. That's okay. 
being open. Free training day is all about aha moments. That's why I love it. I think that's why so many other people love it too. And the last one we're going to get to today comes in from Josh. Thank you to Josh. Happy Monday. Here's a question I've been pondering. I normally think of this question in terms of racial representation, but I think it could apply to martial arts also. I'm all for better representation of martial arts in the media. But I think you could argue that the way martial arts is depicted in movies, comics, and books is often not really the way it is in real life. Yes, real life might not make for good TV, but you could argue, as Fred Rogers did in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, that there's plenty of drama to be had in day-to-day -day life if you look for it. Anyway, different topic, but here's the question. If it's bad representation, meaning stereotyped, closed minded cringy, etc., would it have been better off to have had none at all? It's a good question. I see myself as uh, not the guardian, but a guardian of martial arts. When martial arts is poorly represented in media or culture, I try to stand up. I try to find a way to be an advocate. That's why I wrote Faith. Because I wanted a book that was not a martial arts book that I felt represented the martial arts ethos and the human experience in a healthy way. Cobra Kai is a good example of a show that does not represent martial arts in a great way. It's really dialed in on the human experience. If you've watched that show, you know that there isn't one person teaching martial arts there who is representative of the average martial arts instructor in terms of their own personal development. We've got some really, to use Josh's word, very cringy people teaching martial arts to some kids. And while plenty of people have found some enjoyment in there, and I think the vast majority of people watching the show know that it is a, a characterization. It is not representative of actual martial arts. I bet there are some people, some parents, their kids say, I want to do karate, because they're probably asking to do karate coming out of watching Cobra Kai. And mom or dad sits down and they watch a couple episodes and they're like, you want to do this? I don't know that I want you doing this. Maybe they don't understand the differences. And that's where I draw a line. If we're going to represent martial arts in media, I want it to be positive. I want people to come away from it saying, ah, martial arts is a really good thing. Someday, somewhere, I hope that we as Whistlekick grow large enough that we can help fund a lobby that can get some involvement in this. You know, for example, Cobra Kai comes out and this nonprofit says, has the reach to make sure there are media stories. Cobra Kai is fun, but everyone needs to remember this is not how most martial arts schools operate. So we can have a little bit more of a, a broad social narrative. That would be the goal. We're a long ways off. Oh, it's Cyber Monday. Uh, our big sale is today. Like the big sale of the year is right now today. Uh, what do we do for a code? Let me double check. Don't leave. Cyber Monday. Apparel sale. You know, that dragon hoodie that I've worn, uh, you know, the T-shirts that you've been wanting to buy, the hats that you want to buy. Today is the day. Today is the best day of the year. Come on, app, show me. Monday 21, M-O-N-D-A-Y 21, 25% off all apparel. And you still get free shipping. We are going to break even on most things. Might lose money on a couple things. 
we'll make up for it on a couple other things. Monday 21, it's just today. Social media posts are going out soon. There's a newsletter issue going out soon to announce this. Monday 21, 25% off apparel. If you find something that it doesn't work for, it should, you let me know. Okay, I will fix it. I'm gonna be around my desk all day. I can even fix it from my phone if need be. Everything should be good. I think we dialed everything in over the last couple of weeks. Monday 21, 25% off. So, okay, everyone, you've been you've been quiet this morning, but I hope you have enjoyed today's episode of First Cup. I hope if you haven't picked up a copy of 12 Months to Health, you'll do that. Uh, I hope if you have, please leave a review. We've got some reviews coming in. I can't stress how critical those reviews are to the whole process of getting this book out. We have an internal target of 25 reviews by the end of the year. Please help me get there. I think last I looked, we had four. As soon as you've purchased the book, you can leave a review. Some of you have read pre-release copies. Some of you bought multiple copies. Thank you to all of you. I appreciate all of you. Yeah, the sales are great. Um, we haven't even broken even on the book yet. This is a long-term play. Please leave a review. Okay. And if you want, buy a shirt. Do I have any Whistlekick shirts right here? I don't. I should have gotten all geared up and in current whistle kick stuff. But you know what? I got dressed at six o'clock. I hadn't had coffee yet. I'm sure you can understand. Stacy says, have an awesome day. And I will echo that sentiment. I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Be well. Leave me stuff to talk about tomorrow. And I'll see you then because we do it every day. Peace.